What's up, Cyberhawks? So in today's video, we're going to be going over hacking and how hacking actually looks like. We got a couple good videos. I wanted to start out with this first one before we get into the main juice of the video. But again, a lot of people, including myself, when you know, when I'm like younger, watching The Matrix, I'm thinking hacking, you typing in a whole lot of different stuff. You've seen green, blue, red letters everywhere. And, you know, you're sweating and it's just a lot going on and you're like constantly on it before you're able to, you know, hack into a station or blow up something. But in actuality, <laughs> hacking for the most part <laughs> is not, not like that. You may type in a few things, wait a minute, type in a few things, wait a minute, let things load up, let things do its thing. Or it can be more so not like technical, but more so of the hacking of the mind going to social media and making posts like hey if your your birthday is in december you're this celebrity if your birthday in this one you're this celebrity and like they'll give you like a full list and like they want you to pretty much fill in what celebrity you are and then they'll get you like your month that you're born or like they'll do something along those lines maybe with like the star thing like the constellations and are you sagittarius or are you a, you know uh, Virginia Virgo or whatever and like they'll get your info like that so it's a lot of different ways they be getting people info but hopefully some of these um, videos can kind of help you out uh, not only like the hacker mindset but like how hacking actually looks like now I'm not gonna say in the future and this can change hey maybe in the future we may actually be having hackers looking like the matrix but so far right now it's not like that so let's go ahead and start out with the first video here. When did you first realize you were a hacker? I met a group of people online around 12 or 13 when Call of Duty was pumping. Over time, they'd be like, oh, this dude has been with us for about a couple months now. He gets online every single day at the same time. He wants to hack. He looks like he's interested. How about we show him things outside of the game? So then they invite him into a website for Fortune. So you'd go there and there were people honestly just asking outright, like, we need a hacker. If you want to hack, join us you want to do this do this we're selling hacking tools things like that it was very easy to get your hands on you know me being 12 13 i was a bit naive i was like right well, i'll come along for the journey very young to be getting involved with these sort of softwares and very young man it definitely shapes the brain a bit mm. differently i'm sitting on the computer talking to what i presume are 18 <clears throat> and above so they were teaching me all sorts of things oh interesting interesting so yeah he started when he Join was us. 18 no man i would have loved to have been able to been like on the hacking side of things back at that age so now i could be freaking boss freaking beast play hey, it is what it is but it was interesting that even back then the way that you can get into you know some of these things you know just from like discussion boards you can like you can start a lot you can start a lot especially back then on these discussion boards online and gaming in general you know with people but yeah he started out 12 13 on the ropes I don't know him personally. I don't know how, like, you know, what things he's hacked and all that. Let's see. Pro professional Gacker. I think that man Hacker explains how he got started. Okay. So they don't even tell me the name. I'm pretty sure if I can, like, do some OSINT, some open source intelligence, I'm pretty sure I can find out more info about him. Okay. I do see him on the side right here. So it looks like he does got some more. Maybe I can do some more on him. But yeah, that was pretty cool, kind of just seeing how he ended up getting started in hacking. Cause, Everybody has a different journey. I've seen like the guy from like TCM security, like another big security guy on YouTube. Apparently he started out with this like job journey, like in accounting. And I think he got burnt out on accounting and then ended up switching over to tech. And from the tech side, I think he started on the either help desk or he went right to red teaming. And he also talks about a lot of people he knew who started out in completely different fields that were not adjacent to tech and then ended up as they got older going into tech so yeah you don't have to start this young i think it, i think it can be good but you may you actually may have more of appreciation of it starting it older versus younger so that's something that you can also think about too so let's go ahead and see how hacking actually looks like and I have not seen this video, so I'm definitely intrigued to see what they're going to end up saying and see if I got anything right and or wrong about hacking. But hacking is portrayed like this. Okay, we can skip this. Let's just go to the data breach uh, right here. Yeah. 
breaches. Believe me or not, your password is probably already out there, publicly available on the internet without even your knowledge. This might feel a bit unconvincing, but it's true that there is a chance. Even mine existed publicly on the internet without even me knowing it until recently when I finally found out that my credentials are already stolen and available for literally anyone to see. Yeah, and I know I've talked about this before on this channel. I think that same website too, where you can check to see if your password has, you know, already been taken, already been, you know, out there. And yeah, you can have like the best password and the site that you have the password on. If they get hacked, if they get freaking hacked, then they'll get your info like that. So yeah, you can even you can you can still have the best password in the world and still get your password taken or getting you know put online because somebody else got hacked that you that you're using that password on. So you know, just an FYI right there. I had to then change my password on all my websites immediately. But how did this happen? How is it that your credentials are already publicly available on the internet? This is because of data breaches. When hackers manage to hack a website and get access to the website's database where the user information like their credentials are stored, they leak all this data on the internet. In most cases, they sell this data on hacker forums and dark web or even post it on Pastewin. Mm. It's the hacker's choice, of course. This data contains the usernames and passwords of all or a part of the users of that website. So if you are a user of the website that got breached, your data is leaked True. too. Most of the websites hash your passwords before they store it in their database. Now, we're, gonna, we're not going to watch all of the video, just like the important parts. And hopefully he's actually showing us how, you know, like somebody going in and finding other people's passwords. But yeah, he kind of just showing right now that the accounts or also tell you, even though your results are positive on this site, your data might still be in one of the breaches, which is not popularly known, but still exists. This is the easiest way anyone can take over your social media mm -hmm. accounts or online banking accounts or whatever it is. Recently, many YouTubers like Megan Rinks got their channels taken over by hackers because apparently their credentials already existed in a data breach. Mm. The best way to stay safe from data breaches is to use a different password for every website. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely important. And I talked about this too before on my password video, having a password manager, like there's like several online that you can like do research on. There's plenty of YouTube videos on those. But with that, you can have a hard password for every single site. So yeah, if you're a YouTuber and somehow, let's say a LinkedIn breach happened and they were able to get your LinkedIn credentials from that, then they won't be able to put that into YouTube and get your info or get your account because your YouTube will have a different whole, you know, whole different password there. So yeah, having multiple passwords on different sites and having a password manager so you can manage all that will save you so much. Use a password manager like Dashlane to generate random, unique passwords for every website you use. Social engineering. This is literally you giving away your username and password to a stranger on the internet. Hackers can pretend to be someone else to try to extract your crucial information, like your credentials, directly from you. For example, let's say you get a link like this from someone, and this link claims that you can get Instagram likes instantly for free of cost. You click on the link, and you're taken to a very convincing website that claims to offer you free likes for your Instagram posts. If you put in your Instagram credentials on this website, thinking that this is a legit website, well, you're hacked. This is called phishing. It is one of the several types of social engineering attacks, and it is also the most common technique hackers use. Now, this is obviously not limited. Yeah, phishing is <laughs> definitely very big. Um, like, if you're trying to get the Security Plus certification, you will hear a lot about that. And it's different styles of phishing from, like, emailing you to phone calls to text messaging. A lot of different ways they can get you. Only to Instagram. You may end up losing your other social media accounts, email accounts, or even your online banking accounts through social engineering. However, the way a hacker approaches you to perform this social engineering can vary. And sometimes, even if you're not a computer illiterate, you may still fall for it. A hacker can also install a rat on your device through social engineering. A rat is nothing but a malware that gives the hacker remote access to your device. By installing a rat, the hacker will be able to do literally anything, like stealing your credentials for different websites by using a keylogger, stealing your photos and videos, finding your exact GPS location, mm -hmm. or even operating your device's camera or microphone without your knowledge. For example, look at this innocent SMS I received, which claims that if I install this network carrier app, I will get free internet data. I click on the link and download the APK. It does look like the official app of the network provider. Well, actually, it is indeed the official app of the network provider, but a rat is binded to this app by the hacker. 
As soon as I install this on my device, the hacker has complete access to my device. Mm. I was recently targeted by someone and they tried hacking my YouTube channel through social engineering. I've already made a video about it explaining what happened. If you are interested, you can watch the video by clicking the link in the description below. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that sucks. That sucks. But yeah, like, they're very sneaky. I could see another one. I did a video talking about this called a keylogger. I could see a lot of hackers also doing something similar to that where they can put that on your computer and then they can see exactly what you're typing. So when you type in your password to a site, type in your username, type in whatever other information, they're able to see it on their side and then they can use that to then hack you. Man in the middle attacks. Now this type of hacking is not very likely to occur, but there is a chance that you can get hacked by man in the middle attacks. In this attack, a hacker can put himself as the man in the middle between you and the internet you're browsing. Let's say you're browsing internet from a public Wi-Fi network. Anyone who's using the same Wi-Fi network will be able to put themselves as the man in the middle and they can see your internet traffic or even modify it. This means they will be able to see literally everything that you're sending and receiving from the internet using that public Wi-Fi. But as I said, it is very unlikely to happen because most websites nowadays use HTTPS connection, which means the traffic between you and the website is encrypted and no man in the middle will be able to extract this internet traffic. But you're still at risk if you're using a website that doesn't use HTTPS over HTTP. In such a case, you may want to use a VPN to stay secure while browsing. You can watch the video I made about VPN to know more about why it's a good idea to always use a VPN. I will make sure to leave the link in the description below. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And if okay, cool, cool, cool. I did like the uh, different versions that he showed of how you can get hacked. Let me go ahead and uh, bring it back right here. Yeah, I got 4.5 million. But yeah, we saw the man in the middle. It's more of the least likely, but you can still get hacked that way. And then we saw the social engineering aspect of it, which is another very prominent way. He showed some of the ways you can do it. And I kind of talked about it before, too. Again, like with social media posts. They can be like have a celebrity for each month and then have a song or a color for the every single day of the month. And then they'll say something like, you know, which color and actor you are. And, you'll, you will you know, you'll be like, hey, I'm Red Rock and Red is the 14th and uh, Rock is for January. So you put, you know, so like they can just put those together and be like, OK, you're born in January 14th. So now they already got your birthday pretty much. So, you know, different things of that nature that you can really get hacked that quick or that easily. So something that, you know, definitely look out for data breaches. Unfortunately, it's more on the company that you're actually using. So like 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 the LinkedIn breach, if you're using LinkedIn, you have a good password. You can still have that password again taken. So that's, again, why it's important to have multiple passwords on different sites and hopefully using like a password manager again so that you can manage all these different passwords and not even think about it or password manager. You can really just have one good password in your head and the rest the computer already has, or you can even have a password in your head. And then maybe you have something that you can add on to each password. I talked about this in my password video, but you can have something like on each password, you'll add a ABC five, three or something at the end but you don't write this on the password manager. So when you use the password manager, you have something complicated, it'll create for you if you would like that. And you auto fill that. And then you add in your five or six or whatever extraness that you want to add. So even if somehow they steal your password from that password manager, if somehow that password manager site also gets hacked, they still won't have your password because then you still have extra stuff that you didn't even write on there that you add on each password so you know a little fun fact right there but anyway guys if you already knew about this and great job if you didn't know about this some things to possibly look at if you haven't already be sure to hit that like button and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one peace